Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for Better Business, Better Health. I'm here with John Noster. We're at HIMSS 2022, back in person for the first time in two years. John. Nick, you get better every time I see you. And I'm saying this with a particular point in mind. I look back at 10 years ago, and I, I did a thing for Forbes, and I looked at all the innovations from 10 years ago, and I just looked at them last month and they were all the same. Nothing has advanced. And to me, that's the key insight. That's what I'm seeing here, that we see things like interoperability. Telemedicine is a classic example. Oh my God. It's not being embraced. And I think the, the fundamental reality here is that it's not so much innovation, it's implementation. People yeah. are not driving forward. And you know, the notion of incrementalism may be exactly what we need to do. Innovation is, is a big change, but it has to come step stepwise, and we're not doing it. I, I've just got to say I'm glad that John Noster actually <laughs> said that because you and I have talked about this a fair amount. And sure. I'm, I'm, I'm still a fan of the exponential. I think we have to have the goals, but that execution has really yeah. tripped everybody up. Look, the discovery of penicillin was an innovation. Right. The, the implementation of the use of beta-lactam antibiotics in the treatment of skin infections, of pneumonia, of sinusitis, those were incremental. And I don't think we, we're seeing it. People are not using these modalities in clinical practice. I gave a big talk to a pharma company that wants to become innovative, I guess is the word that you're using <laughs> these days. And, I, and I, so I asked, let's do a quick question. And I asked, how many people here have done a telemedicine visit? And it was only about 5% of the people in the audience. Wait, where was this? I'm not gonna, I can't, I'm not gonna tell you that, but it was at a pharmaceutical meeting. No, but when? Pharmaceutical executives six months ago. Six months, oh, so recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. it was in the dynamic of COVID. Now here's, here's the interesting thing. I think that the utility of, 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 let's say, telemedicine in a pharma company should be the domain of HR. HR should put it on your, your review. So your review is to be smart, to be effective, to meet your numbers, but also everyone in my HR, uh, everyone in my pharmaceutical company has to do a telemedicine visit. We have to push people off the ledge and let them build wings on the way down because I think that humanity as a construct is complacent and they don't want to change. You know medicine like I do. Physicians don't want new. They want the same but better, right? They want that same beta-lactam with better tolerability, better spectrum of coverage, if you will. And I, and I, I think that people are, are, they need to be pushed along the continuum. So, I'm, I, I mean, I don't disagree yeah. with you, but I'm gonna push back a little bit because as I listen to you, I think about the COVID pandemic and mm -hmm. the mandate for vaccines. And whilst I'm a, a, you know, I support vaccines, I'm, you know, I'm vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I think we did ourselves a disservice by pushing and requiring it. Yet you're saying in the case of telehealth, we should require that. Well, I think that, well, from a, a motivational perspective, I would make physicians required to do telemedicine, but I think employees in pharmaceutical companies who want to be innovative should be pushed into, into innovative modalities. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've been watching telemedicine real carefully because what we found is telemedicine went up, right? Two years yeah, ago, right? A lot. And then what happened? It came, came down. down. And some databases are even showing it back to baseline which is really frightening. So what we're saying is telemedicine went up and it came down because it wasn't, it was, it was a necessity, not an imperative. There's a big difference between a necessity and an imperative. We have to make it clinically relevant and clinically imperative by driving it with use cases, like people are finding out that this is a really cool, easy, fun thing to do, and physicians finding out that it's actually better care. The thing that bugs me is we say, if only telemedicine could be as good as the office visit, I think it could be better than the oh, office I visit. I agree, I think that's absolutely true. I think what was interesting to me was the idea that you were mandating or suggesting a, a sort of requirement, but at some respects, that's no different to the mandate from HR who say, hey, if you want cheap health insurance, you've got to go for your office visit. Why not make that a telehealth visit? Right, right. Yeah. How are we going to get pharmaceutical executives to use telemedicine so they can understand the dynamic versus going on the lectern at HIMSS or other meetings and pontificating on the value of technological, technological innovation or transformation? Hmm. Interesting. So, um, Closing thoughts mm -hmm. for the next few days, hymns in person. What do you think you're going to see? Anything that you're excited about? No. 
Next question. Nothing. No, you know what? I'm looking for something to be excited about. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair comment. It's, 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 we haven't seen it yet. No, no and, we and haven't. I, I think it's, it's the same old meeting with the same old people telling me the same old story. Now, that may be a function of the reality, right? It's not, it's not a deficiency. It's, it's the reality. Are we seeing these breakthrough technologies? Are we seeing something really interesting that's going to make, you know, not the cover of the industry trade papers that we all cling to, but the New York Times or Time Magazine? And, and that's what excites me because I hear a lot of that sort of percolating with respect to things like AI, advanced egg, not diagnostic, stage zero disease. But I'm waiting to be surprised. That's where I am at HIMSS today before the doors open. So we'll have to do a catch up afterwards and say, what did we find? And was John Noster surprised? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Always a pleasure, Nick. Thank you. This is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health. <laughs>